There are a few spots of graffiti dotted around Chandwell. In this short video, I'm going to show some of the techniques I used to make them. The simplest technique is just to use a paintbrush. Paint on some words. It doesn't look great, but it works inside a tunnel mouth like this. The second technique is to use downloaded textures. This little Omega kind of shape here I downloaded from somewhere, I can't quite remember where. But since I was building the whole bridge myself in Inkscape, it was a simple case of just dropping it in and moving the image to the right place. It has a transparent background which means that the texture underneath shines through nicely and you've got full control over it like that. I think it looks quite good on the bridge. If we fly over the bridge onto the next girder along, you can see a slightly more advanced technique that I used down here, something a little bit more colourful, and I'll show you how I did that slightly later on in the video. Altogether, the various different techniques make this slightly graffitied part of the layout look quite interesting, and there's always something to look at. Over on the girder bridge, I did something a little bit different. I actually wrote my own words, and I'm going to show you how I did that now. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I use the free open source software Inkscape for all of my designs, and the same is true here. Let's look at this spray painted Scotty. You can see it's an actual object in Inkscape, so I can continue to change its colours even after I've sprayed it. And we can also move it around. How do I get that nice sign of spray paint look? If we look over here in the fill and stroke area, you'll see there's a blur slider. And the more I slide that around, the more blurred or the less blurred it gets. There's also an opacity slider, which means I can make it more see-through. If we ungroup this, you'll see that the word Scotty is nothing more than just a few little hand-drawn lines all put together. You can do it yourself. Get the pencil tool, draw something, and then make it the colour and the blur and the transparency that you want. Remember, this is only about one and a half millimetres tall once it's printed out in Engage, so it doesn't have to be perfect. There we are, a sprayed white Chandwell on the girder. Simple as that. The yellow Michael is slightly more involved. It's more colourful and it looks as though it's been made up of more than one type of paint. If I start pulling it apart, you'll see that it's made up of quite a lot of different pieces. But the technique here is just the same. Let's take a look at the yellow Michael first of all. It's still one object so we can change its colour and we can reduce its blur down to see that really all it is is just the word Michael that I typed in and I used a useful font. I actually split, split each letter up individually so I can reduce the spacing and get it arranged as I wanted, but really all it was was I typed it in, got the letters how I wanted, and that was it. These next ones, they were just the same shape, I removed the fill, so I just had the lines. And then I drew some highlight lines across the top and down the side just to give it a bit of relief to make it look as though the artist had actually drawn the word to have that kind of shine to it. Dragging it back into its home and it looks quite good. Lurking in the darkness underneath the girder bridge is one of the more complicated pieces of graffiti. Let's take a look at this unfortunate fellow first. One of the most important things with graffiti is you need to make it look as though it's painted onto the stones underneath. And to that end, you need to be able to see some of the texture of the bricks shining through the colour of the graffiti that we're making. And to give us full control over that, we can use the transparency with, or we can use the blend mode, which is all about how the image underneath shines through which parts of the image on top. You can try them all out yourself, but I find that overlay works the best. It gives that nice kind of semi-transparent look where the highlights of the bricks are really highlighted on the paint, whereas the darker parts of the brick are just slightly darkened to make the paint look a slightly darker colour than it would. I think it looks really good and I use that overlay mode on all of the graffiti that I make for the textures that I put on my buildings. So what about this Nancy? Nancy is the name of my dog, so this is my dog's part of the layout. I've found this font online, um, it wasn't really a font that you can type with, it was just some examples of some graffiti. So what I did was I chose the letters that I wanted and I basically copied it um, by hand. But I ended up with multiple versions of the word Nancy. Each one's a slightly different colour. 
and each one I've coloured in different parts of it so some bits are filled in on the middle and some bits I've just done around the outlines like I did on the Michael on the other bridge. So we've got these five pieces of the word Nancy and we've got this white bit here. I wanted this to just look like spray paint on the wall so if you'll have a look it's just a very basic shape that I drew around myself. Increased the blur and reduced the transparency a little bit just to make it look as though it was painted on lightly onto the brick and you can see the texture underneath shining through. These stars are just lines that I drew by hand. They are tiny, they're less than a millimetre tall on the real thing once it's printed out. But it just makes it look as though there's shiny bits being painted on in some kind of silver paint or some bright white paint. And once it's on the layout underneath the bridge, these little highlights really make the difference. It looks very, very good um, to the eye. If we return to the Iron Girder Bridge and cross the river to where the towpath is going to be, or at least the riverside path, you'll see there's some graffiti here as well. On the real thing near Dewsbury, each individual upright has got a different letter of someone's name on it. So I really like that idea. So I used all the same techniques that I've just shown here to write Stanley across each of the bridge stanchions there. Each one's got more graffiti written on top of it and various different characters and alien faces and things. I had really good fun making that and I think it's worked really well. It's difficult to see on the layout because of the angle of it, but once the river is in place, it will look really special, I think. The techniques that I've shown here don't have to stop at graffiti. I used all the same techniques when I was making the fronts of these arches. It's based upon the scale scenes template, but I used my own techniques in Inkscape, like I've shown, to make customised versions of these fronts. So they're like nothing that no one else will have, and they're unique to Chandwell. Inkscape is free to download, so go ahead, download it, and have a try at doing your own graffiti. Get a texture from textures.com, they're free as well, and there are hundreds of them, if not thousands. If you watch what I'm doing on the screen here, essentially all I do is I scribble around and I just play. I keep adjusting settings, dragging things around, until I have something that looks good to the eye. Don't forget to add the little highlights and things like that, because I think that makes a big difference. Study some real graffiti that you see and you'll see that it's often quite colourful and has quite a lot of highlights and things on it. I hope this has inspired you to give it a try. If it has, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.